Good morning and welcome to worship on this Sunday the 25th of June. Am I going to say it or am I not? We are six months from Christmas and I guess I just did say it out loud. But it has been an amazing summer filled week although we have had some torrential rain and thunderstorms and I hope wherever you find yourself you've been able to enjoy the good weather, being grateful for the rain but not being caught in it either or suffered from the consequences. Today is Appreciation Sunday in the church, which is a Sunday where we mark the con contribution of our young people, our children and our young people. Um, some churches might call it prize giving or promotion Sunday. Um, we like to call it Appreciation Sunday because the children are just as an important part of our church as anybody else. Um, but it's always good to show appreciation, to give small gifts and acknowledgement of who they are and what they bring to the life of the church. Sadly, today as well, uh, we say goodbye to our music development leader, Mary. Uh, she is going down south to follow her heart in singing. She's going to be a student again, and uh, she is uh, prefers opera uh, as her style of music, and she is very, very talented, and we are going to miss her terribly, but we wish her all the best, and we hope that she's not a stranger and that she comes back and shares with us in the future. And perhaps, who knows, when her name's up in lights, we'll be able to say, we knew her or we know her perhaps even better. So uh, today we also finish our series, our In, Up, Out series and uh, the triangle, I'm sure you'll remember. We covered in a couple of weeks ago, we covered out last week and today we finish with up, always remembering that we need all three of them to remain in balance. And it's really important for us to think about that relationship that we have with God and who God is to us. Uh, and how we understand God in our relationship. Sometimes we think we must appease him. Sometimes we think he's like an old grandfather figure. We all have kind of different images of who God is to us. Um, some that are, that are good and some perhaps that are not very helpful. But we need to remember that God meets us as we are where we are. And so what comes next is in our lives is because of that relationship with God. So um, there is an argument that once you meet God, you cannot stay the same. Um, and perhaps over time, we'll explore that even further. Our call to worship. Let all the earth acclaim God, sing glory to his name. Come and see what God has done. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Blessed is God who has not withdrawn from us his love and care. See what I mean? Even the psalmist can use verses like, blessed is God who has not withdrawn from us his love and care. And we hold on to those words as we go into our service of worship and praise, where we look up and know that God looks down and yet somehow we're all together. Let's worship God with um, a wonderful psalm that does celebrate the goodness of God in the good and the hard times. It's the Lord's My Shepherd and it's the Stuart Townend version sung today by the St Lawrence Church in Chorley.
time of prayer we're going to have a couple of short songs that I'm sure will bring back memories for some this little light of mine and then read your bible pray every day and you'll grow 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 and after that Anne is going to share a short but familiar text from Matthew's gospel but first let's join together in prayer we'll conclude with the Lord's prayer as we usually do and the words will be on your screen but there's a little bit of the prayer because it is an all-age service um, where I've included a little bit of hand movement and you're invited to join in with me as uh, I go through the prayer. So later on in the prayer, just listen out for those instructions. Let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the joy of today, for the simple pleasures, for the food we have eaten, what we have drank, the medications that have held at bay the sneezes and given us our get up and go the smiles that have lit up around us, the gift of breath and the promise of adventure. Lord God, we offer you this beautiful day of ours and pray that we would use it to celebrate you, celebrate your amazing world and rejoice in the company of family and friends. Merciful God, we are sorry for the times when we are ungrateful. We are sorry when our words hurt others and break hearts. We are sorry when we have turned away and let another struggle on unaided. We are sorry when we're so caught up in our own things, we don't realise how selfish we are behaving. Help us, Lord God, to be open to the opportunities to help and thereby allow others around us to get a rest. Help us, Lord, to listen to the pain of others without judgment or impatience. And help us, Lord, to stop and sit in your presence, just as we are. We place our hands on our heads, settling our swirling thoughts. We put our hands on our shoulders and gently push them down. Relax and breathe out. We let go of our tension and anxiety. We wrap our arms around our waist, feeling the embrace of God's love. We place our hands on our knees Grateful for our bodies, the places we have been this week, the things we have done. We tap our feet and feel the anticipation of where we might go this week and look forward to all that will be. We sit at peace. Be pleased to join with us in worship and may we know your holy presence celebrating with us. In your name and for your sake, Lord, and for ours, we pray. And together with confidence, we pray your words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi, I'm Erla. And I'm Ethel. This is Read Your Bible. 
Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray. Forget to pray, forget to pray. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you shrink, shrink, shrink. And you shrink, shrink, shrink. And you shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you shrink, shrink, shrink. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. The reading of this morning is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, reading from verse 25. Come to me and rest. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you wanted it to happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. Amen. We continue our series on In, Up and Out, that triangle. Um, you'll have it well firmly in your mind by now, I'm sure. And over the 
past couple of weeks we've looked at two of the vows for joining the church and this week we're going to look at what would be the first vow if you were to join the church as in the Church of Scotland. So we looked at in where we thought about uh, being part of the church family and the responsibilities and rights that that brings and we looked at out uh, focusing on the community and how we might reach out and support one another and so today we look up. Now remember of course we need all three to be in balance but we've broken it down into this short teaching series. Understandably up is incredibly important for without the up we miss really a significant part of our identity. It's not hard to be in. We can be in and supporting one another. Um, we could be um, a helpful charity, a bunch of good people trying to do the right thing, or we could be a social club and we've lost sight of who we are. So, do you know, if you kind of take God out of the equation, then we are really just a social club or we're a group of people doing good things. And neither of them are without their merit. It's just without the up, where is God in the mix? Many of us could think of organisations that have a reason for existence and faith is meant to be a part of that but you don't really see faith in action. And rem remember, no matter what anybody tells you, football is competition. It is not a Christian denomination. So what is the missing vow that we haven't done yet? It is, do you promise with God's help to follow Jesus Christ in your daily life and in listening for God's word in the breaking of bread and prayer to grow ever closer to him as the years pass? With God's help, I will. Do you promise with God's, God's help to follow Jesus Christ in your daily life and in listening for God's word in the breaking of bread and prayer to grow ever closer to him as the years pass? With God's help, I will. So the up focus is about your relationship with God. Each of us from the youngest to the oldest can have a personal relationship with God with Jesus, with Creator, with Spirit. Now you might call God Father or Mother, it might be Christ, Saviour, it might be Almighty God, it might be just Lord. Just as I am Mum, Sarah, Minister, Rave, Auntie, even Granny Ross, those who love me or know me, and vice versa, know me with different titles, but I'm still me. I'm still Sarah in all of those circumstances. And it is the same with God. So some people are more comfortable with one name, title, role than another. And that's okay. Totally okay. It is your relationship with God. And the fact is that we have the Holy Spirit who enables us to have that relationship. Just notice what I did say. I said it is a personal relationship, not a private relationship. It isn't about keeping it a secret. And a lot of what we have done in the church is really make that relationship private and we don't talk about it. And that's part of the problem that we have in church decline. This isn't Fight Club where you don't talk about Fight Club. And that's a movie reference for those of you who know what I'm talking about. So. Acknowledging the fact that without God, we are just a social club or a charity agency, that with God in the mix, we are uh, something else. And therefore, when we look up, what does that actually mean? So let's think about up. Remembering that Jesus teaches us how to have that up relationship. But when we look up, what is up? apart from a movie with balloons and a floating house, which is also a very good movie. But if we look up, what might we see? Now, if you're in a house somewhere watching this, then you look up and you're gonna say, well, the ceiling, okay, the light. If you're outside in the park, then you get a better chance of going in the same train of thought as me. So if we look up, we might see stars, we might see clouds, we might see birds, we might see planes, we might see the sky and the, just, you know, sometimes when you look up, you realize how small you are. And we often think about God looking down. Um, it goes alongside that idea that God is with us and through us and stuff. But we'll, you know, we'll come back to that. We naturally think of God as being up. 
heaven is up. So it's natural to make up about our relationship with God. And looking up is definitely better than looking down. So how does Jesus embody that up element? How does he teach us how to look up, to have an upward facing relationship? Well, short and sweet. Jesus prayed regularly. He prayed privately, often letting the disciples go on ahead. He went up mountains or he went into the desert and he often caught up with them. Some of the stories, you know, talk of him walking on water and so on. He was in constant contact with God, his father, and spoke of his father in very personal, intimate and familiar ways. Most of us know that the Lord's Prayer, our Father is Abba Father, and it was a very personal way in the Jewish culture to re reference God, particularly in a culture that actually never used God's name in its entirety. Such was the respect that they had for God. And Jesus comes along and calls him Daddy. So, you know, there's a real uh, sense of relationship, personal, uh, engaged relationship. So he, he inhaled his Father's presence so he could exhale his father's will. So it's a really posh way of putting, the, putting it, to be honest. We cannot neglect prayer and it's part of our abiding in God in order to do his work. You know, conversations happen all the time and without conversations then you don't know what each other is up to. And that's what prayer is, a conversation between you and God. Jesus went to synagogue on a regular basis, um, church, and he followed the festivals. Uh, right even from the age of 12, we've got records of him going to festivals. So marking the key moments in the faith. He was not embarrassed about prayer and he prax practiced it with his disciples so much so that they asked him to teach them how to pray. And he does. We also have recorded prayers of Jesus for the disciples. He follows God's leading even to the Garden of Gethsemane and Calvary's hill. And he trusted in God's provision and believed that when he asked, his father would honor him, healing the sick, feeding the hungry, teaching the common folk and more. In John 5, 19, we read these words, but Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing alone. The son does only what he sees the father doing because the son does whatever the father does. They are intertwined, they are as one and it, ideally that's where we are going as Christians the closer we come to God the more aware we are of God's call on our lives and what is important to him and therefore we become more entwined probably not quite as intertwined as Jesus but he does challenge us to try so we are called to follow Jesus in his daily life which obviously brings together the up the in and the out because Jesus looked after his disciples he taught them he taught them how to pray developed their faith at the same time as helping the poor the sick eh, and so on eh, you know helping the people in the community somehow though it's often easier to do the churchy bit and the community bit but that personal bit well that can just be a little bit harder. I remember in the Salvation Army we had to make a promise to read our Bibles and pray every day, a bit like the song, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And it's a tough promise to keep unless you're that way minded. Some, some Christians are very contemplative by nature eh, and thoroughly enjoy that kind of quiet time and, and sitting reading and praying and reflecting and pondering. Eh, others are perhaps more on the go and more active and struggle to do that sit still heart. But even then, there is nothing to stop us learning from the example of Jesus. We can pray at any time, anywhere. And I wonder where your favourite place is to pray. Now, I have a seat in my house that faces out into my garden. It's a comfy chair. I get to watch nature at our best. And I just can relax in God's company in that safe place. And I hope that you have somewhere as well. I do pray in my car. I pray washing the dishes. I pray, yeah, just about all the time. But I don't mean that to come out as a really religious thing. It's more just, it's just a natural part of my relationship with God. For those who are social media fans or even like to read the newspaper, how long do you do that for? Be honest. 
How much time do you lose in the everyday mundane, unimportant stuff? And yet, you don't have time to read your Bibles. I know, I know, trust me, I'm talking to myself too. And some of you might come back and say, well, actually, I don't know where to start in the Bible. It's a big book. It's got lots of books within the book. Some of it is really hard to get my head around. Some of it I don't like. It's too dark. It's too dangerous. And so on and so forth. And I get that. And there's lots of different ways that you can engage with scripture. Um, always, I would tell people to start in the Gospels. Start with Jesus. I know it sounds obvious as well, but start with Jesus. Do not start at Genesis and try and work your way through from Genesis to Revelation. It's doable. Very doable. But if you're not um, kind of into the Bible yet, it's not where I would start. Uh, I would definitely start with one of the Gospels. Um, Matthew and Luke are kind of your historian type ones. Uh, John is your philosophical, uh, philosophical thinker. And uh, Mark, he's like a journalist, so he writes short and snappy. Um, so different ways of looking at, at the stories of Jesus. Okay. Um, it, also, please, 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 please buy a Bible that you can actually read or go to a charity book or whatever. But please get a Bible that you can read. Love your special one. But if you can't read it, honestly, get one you can. Get one with big enough print and a version that you like and invest in a really good Bible for you. Okay. I'm pretty sure Carl Bart said that the Bible isn't holy until you pick it up and read it. So here's a thought. But what I really love in this vow is that phrase, as the years pass. Okay, so you might be starting to feel slightly overwhelmed with all of this, and I don't want you to. But to acknowledge the fact that our relationship grows. If you have been married for a long time, you will know that your relationship has grown and changed. If you have been blessed to have a friendship that has lasted a really long time, and you were to look back over it, you will notice that your relationship has grown and changed over the years. That's just who we are as human beings. So it is with God. And we can come to faith like falling in love and you know we're full of enthusiasm and everybody has to know and um, you Christians are the best but also hard work. And then you know life has a way of just kind of getting us down. There's growing up, there's the decisions that we have to make, what kind of job we're going to have, are we going to get married, are we not going to get married, uh, are we going to buy a house, are we going to rent, are we going to live here, are we going to live there, um, you know, are we going to go down south and study, and, and all that kind of stuff, all kind of can take its toll on us, and we start to feel quite burdened and weighed down. doesn't matter what stage of life you are at, Jesus is right there with you. But when we look down, we get bogged down in the mundane. And we think, can't do this. It's a rat race. I mean, we talk about life as a rat race. Um, it can get overwhelming, anxiety can build up and so on and so forth. And we can get so busy that we're whirling around like water going down a plug hole, uh, or we get lost in negative thoughts like, I, I haven't been a Christian long enough, I don't know enough about God, um, and so on. And, and we, just, we just get lost somewhere in the midst of all of that. And that's why I picked this particular text. Jesus said that by being yoked to him, that is in a working partnership with him, that we would find everything much easier. Paul says he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. And that's at the heart of what Jesus is saying in this passage. Come to me, all you who are weary, and so on. And the challenge to live a faithful life is real. It's really difficult at times to do the right thing. And sometimes we just need to rest. Come to me, all you who are weary, and rest. In John's Gospel, Jesus talks about abiding in God. And that's just taking that time to rest, to retreat, to take a step back. Allowing God to hold us, to heal us, to restore us. It's listening for his word. It might be somebody offering to lift a weight off your shoulders by helping you. It might be a wee note that says thank you. It might be a gift of appreciation that reminds you that you are valued and loved. These are all God's word to you. Too often we are so busy sorting out the in, looking after each other in the church family, and certainly working hard on the out, supporting the community that we can neglect the up without meaning to. 
I know that. My track record is not fabulous either. But prayer is available to us anytime, anywhere. My math teacher often said that I would never carry a calculator in my pocket. Well, <laughs> this goes to show what she knew, eh? But you carry a Bible in your pocket all the time. Unless, unless you're one of the few who haven't quite gone down the road of a smartphone. You can read the Bible online, anywhere. There are numerous apps to help as well. And if you find yourself pondering, I wonder what that means, maybe the minister knows. Well, drop me a line, ask the question. And if I don't know, I'll hopefully know somebody who does. Elders too have a special role and in olden times it was perhaps easier to do. Elders remain responsible for the spiritual well-being of the parish, not the congregation, but the parish. And what happened then was that most of the parish went to church. They went to the Church of Scotland or they went to the Roman Catholic Church uh, and a few went to some of the smaller denominations, at least up here uh, in Scotland. The Church of Scotland members were appointed an elder who checked up on them. The elder would find out if they studied the catechism, I guess a kind of rule book, if they'd behaved themselves. So for the women, it was no gossiping and for the men staying sober. No comment. If they'd really misbehaved, they wouldn't be allowed to come to communion. Elders could, and technically still can, discipline, but it's not something we see so much nowadays. And we kind of slipped into calling it pastoral care because we're more comfortable looking after people's well-being than their spiritual well-being. But folks, we have a responsibility to support one another spiritually. Our elders still have a role, but there is no way in the current climate that they can do it by themselves. So we do it together. To teach prayer, to encourage worship leaders to let the musicians play and the singers sing, to open the word with one another, to share our faith stories. What has God done in your life that could encourage another in their life? And that's what Jesus did because he himself was strengthened by God. We can only share our experiences and what we know. So we have a responsibility to develop our personal relationship with God. Let's be a church that looks up and goes in the strength of God. Only then will we truly be a vibrant, thriving in church family that others want to join and find out more. And the healthiness of our in will make our out a blessing and not a burden on our community or to us. And if you need to rest first, and trust me, you will need to rest on and off. That is the pattern of our faith journeys. Rest and use that time to listen for God's word for you. Listen to what people are offering you around you, because that might help you understand what kind of rest you need. And if you need to be busy, if this is your busy season, then go for it. The harvest fields God calls us into are there and a plenty. Just make sure it's with God rather than ahead of God. It is our intention and our journey to make sure that we are an up, in and out family at all times. Easier said than done, but with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. I'm going to sing a song that Mary taught us at Christmas. Uh, it's one that we quite like as well. And uh, obviously it tells the story of Jesus too, but also reminds us that we can come to God too. Sing Hey for the Carpenter. Uh, this one is sung to us for, by the Frodsham Methodist Church, following which we'll have a time of prayer. Lay down what you clutch 
time of prayer I'm going to share with you our offering prayer and then we're going to sing verse 4 of Dear Lord and Father of Mankind following which there'll be our prayers for others and then we'll close that prayer with verse 5 from Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Let's pray. Out of your providing Lord we make this offering brought from our daily living Recognising that we bring from our time and talents, from our wealth and from our hearts, sanctify your gift and bless the life from which it comes, that with a cheerful spirit and an ungrudging heart, we may be devoted to your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We sing together verse 4, and our singing is led by the Northern Baptist Association. Lord, we are so grateful for your presence with us through all the ups and downs of life. And so we take a few moments to pause and pray for those in our church family. We pray for our children and young people. We pray that they would know your love, your peace and your presence with them in the school corridors and classrooms, the playground and on social media. We pray that when the decision making is overwhelming, when the pressure to conform or rebel threatens their identity, when the academic work is a struggle or when they feel most able and content, they would hear your gentle voice of encouragement. May they always know that they are always loved and welcomed by you, even when they get it wrong or aren't sure what to do. We pray that we would be loving, supporting people in their world, a safe haven and role models of the faith. We thank you for all of them, from the quietest to the most energetic, the smallest to the tallest, the serious and the funny. 
We thank you for their faith, their witness, and their ability to teach so much to anyone willing to learn. We pray for our faith builder leaders, for their hard work and tenacity, for their dedication and desire to enable and empower them all in faith and love. Thank you. We pray for Mary and this new adventure she is in the midst of preparing for. We pray your richest blessing upon her life and may she always know how loved she is by you and by us. We thank you for how you have gifted her with music, her ability to sing opera and her beautiful personality. May she never lose sight of herself or you in all that comes next. Bless her and Gary on their new adventure. We pray for the fast approaching summer holidays for our schools, for families looking forward to some time together over the coming weeks, for teachers and support staff looking forward to no early morning alarms and well-earned rest, for children and young people looking forward to less schedule and more play. May the hopes and dreams of their summers come true. Teach us all to rest and play more, to appreciate the small things and to keep our cool, whatever the weather or the mood. We pray for those afraid of the summer weeks, wondering how they might entertain or feed their children. We pray for those worrying about the cost of living over these coming weeks. We pray we would be a place of support and help and that we would be aware that these weeks can also be difficult. May we be generous in our giving and our compassion. We commit into your hands those we know and love. We commit into your care those who are hurting or scared. We pray for those who search for the lost and those who wait. We pray for those who fight for justice in war, in policy, in protest and in government. We pray for those who need peace in mind in body, in soul. We pray for ourselves. And as we do so, we sing again. Answer our prayers, and if we be the answer to another's, may we be neither defiant nor unwilling. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us in worship once again, and I hope it's been an encouragement and a blessing to you. We are starting a summer series on friendship. Uh, we're going to be looking at different pairings throughout Scripture looking at friendships um, and we hope that you enjoy that series as we go through these summer weeks. We are going to have some variation with the online material because um, there's a couple of Sundays where Hazel and I are off but we'll explain more about that when we get to them and we have been collecting favourite hymns and they will uh, feature in our services as well. Um, we'll try and keep you though in the loop as best we can. If you have been thinking about joining the church, if that's something that you would like to do, um, then please do uh, get in touch with us, um, especially if, you're, if you live local. We are a parish church, but that said, um, we do want you to feel part of this. And if it's something that you want to explore, uh, please just let us know. But again, remember, you do not have to have your name on any piece of paper with us to be a part of our family. But we are going to be opening up uh, the, the conversation about membership, particularly in the light of possible changes that may come forward in the coming months. And again, it allows people to fully participate in decision making. But that is not the only reason to join the church.
Anyway, before I dig myself into an even deeper hole, please know God loves you, we love you, and uh, I pray for a very blessed week ahead. We are going to close with a song that just seemed appropriate with um, summer holidays just around the corner with Mary heading off on her new adventures. And well, who knows where the Lord's taking us over these next few weeks as well. So our closing song today is One More Step Along the World I Go. And this time comes from the West End Congregational Church, following which we'll have our blessing. One more step along the world I go One more step along the world I go From the old things to the new Keep me travelling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me travelling along with you Round the corners of the world I turn And our blessing. Live in union with Christ Jesus as Lord. Be rooted in him. Be built in him. Grow strong in the faith. Let your hearts overflow with thankfulness. God loves you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>